Praise God! Let's say praise God! May buong tingali mo nga nung my head is like this. I thought di ko makapreach kung sa iswas nag-inflamed, nasugsug ko. Nag-weeding mi ba in the house? And it got inflamed and last Friday, I have to go and have it operated. So, inflamed pa until karoon. So, I don't know what how to go about sa sermon or, you know. But uh, this morning, I just want to share this to you. Because I've been asking the Lord, Lord, I'm so old to have all this pain. I just got a gallbladder last month operation. <laughs> Another other operation with the hand. Uh, the Lord spoke to me while I was in the banyo. Thank you. To put emphasis on what you're going to teach. Because when I release, when during the operation I shouted, it was so painful. There was no not enough anesthesia, uh, and it made me realize the pain God has to go through for each and every one of us. Because He was punctured right here. This is a no man's island, according to the doctor. It's the most painful part. And uh, I said, Lord, I'm like. Maybe the thief that was hanging one hand on the cross. <laughs> but I praise, I praise God for allowing me to taste the pain that he went through. And I know there are a lot of pains that we, that we went through, just like he went through. And uh, we always come to really f- acknowledge, feel, and value. Uh, this morning's uh, past message is actually... Have you considered the cost of following Jesus Christ? Have you considered the cost? So before we go there, uh, I'd like us to pray and ask the Lord to really anoint His Word. Kaya na si Gidaga na akong cursor. Karaan na kayo nga. So let's come before the Lord. Father, you love us so much that you died for all of us. And that's the only way for us to really be reconciled to the Father. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, bloody sacrifice, how painful it was for you to see him at the cross. And it was too painful for him as well to bear all our sins, but it was Lord, the only way, and for him, Lord, to be the sin so that all our sins will be paid and your wrath will be upon him. Lord, it's unthinkable of what you have done. We could never possibly duplicate what you have done for us. So, Lord, with your grace and mercy, we appeal to you that you enlighten our hearts and our minds and cause us to be more passionate because as we more committed, determined, intentional in being a believer, if we say we truly know you. Father, at times we need to remember, time and time again, the cost of following you. So help us to really reconsider if we have, Lord, really analyzed, evaluate, and willing to really follow you. So, Father, whatever you're going to say and whatever you're going to achieve, we give you all the glory alone, the honor, and the praises for you are the Almighty God, our Creator, our Redeemer, our King, our Master. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. There are things we need to consider in following Jesus Christ. You see, a lot of times we make decisions without really considering the result. When... We are there already with our decision. We are realized, oh, I made a mistake. It's too hard to go back. And there is no way really turning back. An example of that is marriage. I'm single though. <laughs> Many people think, oh, this is the person. And then only to realize you see the worst of that person and you just want to cut ties, you want a divorce, or you just stay uh, in one house, separated, actually, no? Um, this is similar to our marriage with Jesus Christ. 
Many people accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior without counting the cost. As their journey with Christ, they journey with Christ, they meet so many challenges like persecution, I hear a lot of people and even know a lot of people that join in my ma bankrupt sila. Their families desert them, they don't have any more friends, and they find it so horrible that they just call it quits. Or still stay in the church because now they are meeting new people, but actually I would call them divorced Christians. Okay? For me, being married to Jesus is the best decision I made in my life. For who can find a faithful husband, a very good provider, a wise protector, a loving comforter, and most of all, a reliable friend? Jesus is life itself. And what is my life without the owner of my life? Amen? So today's message is a challenge for us to carefully evaluate if we truly understand what it is to follow Jesus Christ and if we have truly considered the cost of following him. You see, it is God's desire that we truly know him and take the challenge that he's giving for us today with that diligence because the moment you choose to follow Christ, you are married to him. Walang divorce sa ginoo. Okay? So, we need to consider and think hard if we really want to be his disciples. For it is not God who is at test here but us with regard to our commitment and to our faithfulness. So, I hope you will think hard after the sermon and consider well if Jesus is worth the price for sacrifices we need to make in order for him to be exalted in and over our lives. For if we allow this message to just pass through our ears, heart, and mind, I would say we are the biggest loser on earth. For we cannot possibly find such a God, man who loves us to the max unconditionally and is willing to put up with our weaknesses. And most of all, Jesus promised us eternal life with him. May the name of the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified. And as we glorify God, the, uh, Jesus Christ and God the Father, and may the Holy Spirit really work in each and every one of us. So are you ready to listen to the message? Amen. So our text will be in uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 57 to 62. As they were walking along the road, the man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. So there are things that we need to consider when we want to follow Jesus. One, be willing to leave the comfort of earthly life. Two, be willing to separate from the unbelievers, if you have to. And three, be willing to let go of earthly families, if you have to, and or loved ones. The setting here is Jesus and the 12 disciples were walking through Samaria to Jerusalem. Along the way, Jesus got involved in a conversation with three individuals. These three individuals are not part of the 12 chosen disciples of Jesus. They could be those who have been following her, him wherever he goes. In our next text, uh, in our text rather, two made known their intentions to follow him. The other one was invited by Jesus himself. Jesus showed them the cost of following him. 
Let us listen and learn from the Lord Jesus the things we need to consider if we want to follow Him. Number one thing to consider, be willing to leave the comfort of earthly life. So as they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Wow, what a great statement. Really, murag, sigurado na kay siya. But Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay said. Matthew 8, 19 tells us that this man was a scribe, a teacher of the law. He made his intention to follow Jesus wherever he goes. The word follow in Greek is akolotheo, to be in the same way with that person that is to accompany as a disciple. Sa atong linggo, walang iwanan. Maunta na. But what is a scribe or a teacher of the law? Eastern's Bible Dictionary tells us that the scribes held various important offices in the public affairs of the nation. The Hebrew word is sofer. It is first used to designate the holder of some military office. The scribes acted as secretaries of state whose business it was to prepare and issue decrees in the name of the kings. And we can see it in 2 Samuel, etc., etc. Uh, they discharge various other important public duties as men of high authority and influence in the affairs of state. In the New Testament, the scribes belonged to the sect of the Pharisees who supplemented the ancient written law with their traditions. And we can see that in Matthew 23. Thereby obscuring and rendering it of no effect. They were in the time of our Lord, the public teachers of the people, and frequently came into collision with him. They afterwards showed themselves greatly hostile to the apostles, and we can see that in the book of Acts. And this is the worst. From their students, Scribes demand honors, even surpassing those bestowed on parents. Everywhere, the rabbis demanded the position of first rank. Matthew 23, Mark 12, Luke 11, etc. Their dress is uh, equal to that of the nobility. They wore stulai, tunics, and these were the mark of the upper class. I got that from International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. From Jesus, we can learn more about who they are. This is what Jesus said. Luke 20, 45, 47. While all the people were listening, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished more severely. Wow. We all know. If that is what is ascribed during the time of Jesus, then what made this particular person say he wants to follow Jesus wherever he goes? It is very possible that he observed the ministry of Jesus, got enticed, impressed by it, by his wisdom, by his popularity, and by his teachings, of course. Kaya ni surpass man siya sa ilang teachings. Many theologians say that this person was seeking worldly advantages. Thus, he desired to join Jesus. For a man of high authority and influence in the affairs of a state, a man in the upper class, what could be his reason to follow a nobody like Jesus? Remember, Jesus was a carpenter's son without proper education. Not an upper class, of course. So what could be his reason? People of God, a lot of times, we plug into churches. Nindot madiris ni GFM, way, aircon. 
I come from lang. <laughs> for a big church in Cebu where the upper class are there, the people of power and influence are there. And if you're a beast standing in a pulpit, wow, sikat ka. Sikat ka, dude. Okay? But there are a lot of people that gets involved in works, ministries, to be recognized. Their hearts is not there, actually. Last Sunday, uh, Jean, right, was talking about abilities that we can give to God, although he focused more on the treasure, or the gift that we need to give back to the Lord. And it's always very tempting to get the glory that is due to God. We can involve in so many ministries, be whether in bin front or whatever, and of course, you will stick out just like my right hand because you are there working. Okay? But whatever it was, for whatever reason, Jesus saw his heart and immediately gave the man hard meat to chew. Usapan ni dong. Kung kausap ba ka ni ini, da ba kay ngipon? Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. Gi compare ni Jesus ang iyang sitwasyon. Ngadto gani sa mga foxes o sa mga birds. Na sila home to go to, security, a, 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 a bed to lay down when they are tired after the end of the day. But the Son of Man don't even have a pillow for his head. Mutikuko lang, magana lang matug. Why katri? It was like Jesus asking described this way, with your wealth, power, and position, and status in life that brings you so much ease and comfort, are you really willing to let it go and follow me? Consider the cost of being my disciple. Of course, we have not heard from the Bible if the scribe pursued his, I will follow you wherever you go. How many times we said to God, I will follow you. How many times we go in through some emotional, whatever thing, and then cry to God, and then after that, it's manaman to, manang salida, and then we go back to our own life again as if what we experienced with Christ was nothing. We need to remember what Jesus did. He gave up the best life he has in heaven as God to become an ordinary man living an ordinary life, died a criminal's death at the cross to pay for all our sins. In short, Jesus Christ sacrificed a lot, greatly, tremendously for us. Jesus did not live a comfortable life. Our salvation was his priority. And the only way to rescue us from darkness is for him to suffer and die at the cross. Therefore, we need to understand that comfort in this life should not be our priority. For everything here is passing away. This is not our home. We are mere travelers. Visitors that pass through this earth. Heaven, just like Auntie Charit, is our home where God is. And I said this morning, I envy her. She's there already. Therefore, we must prioritize our relationship with God, for in Him is eternal life. On the other hand, Jesus showed up, shows us his intimate relationship with the Father by having a constant communication. He allowed the Holy Spirit to work in him and through him. He showed to us that it is possible, it is possible, I'm not saying that you should be poor if you follow Christ. It is possible 
to be poor in the things of this world and survive but be found living in heaven as king than to be rich in this world and die in hell without any comfort and hope at all. Can you say amen to that? When I became a Christian, one after the other, just just mugs ako and I said, you know, I'm not a Christian. <laughs> it was so difficult. Families deserted me, friends, and then God was asking me to become a nobody. And if you are somebody up there, ngagi, tingala sa mga katauhan, wherever you go, oh, you know, it's so hard to just go down. You want to hold on to it. It becomes your like identity. You are nothing if I'm not the Joji Maranga they know. But you see, following Christ is to really give it all. Give, surrender it to Christ. Not because you're going to lose everything, but Christ just wants to, you to wear his humility, his righteousness, who he is, and we don't have to wear anymore what we used to wear. We are not the old is gone, right? And the new has come. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So have you considered giving up the comfort in life if God will ask you to? Are you kisi-kisi? Ako ni kisi-kisi ko, but eventually, ni give in nasad ko. Okay, so point third two, be willing to separate from worldly affairs, included ang mga tao, Nga imo sige kuyog kuyog ba? Luke 59 said, He said to another man, Jesus said, Follow me. But the man replied, Lord, let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. So in this case, it was Jesus who invited the person, unlike the first one. But this man has the nerve to make conditions. Jesus possibly invited this man for him to be disengaged as a disciple. And that's true to my, to my life. If God has not called me full-time, yakisikisi man ko, di ko ganang magpastor. Ganalan ko mag-assistant. I can do anything as is anybody, but not be the pastor. Okay. Tanawan mga, kiliskison mga. You're like a uh, so, you can fish in a bowl, di ba? in an aquarium, so you can what you're doing. And especially with my temper before, grabe. God always said, remind me, oh, so ko nasad ka nag drive din ha, kay nang overtake to niya, kalitog hunong. Niya, ako mo nang gukuron sa unay, naka ako salbahis, gukuron na nako niya, may nga, sa mga, bagay ka? Ah, kay gusto ganyan lagi, feeling strong pa man before. Okay, I was strong, determined. I know I can topple down anybody. I was that confident. And God has to really push, push me down and even push me further. 60 plus <laughs> And I said, Lord, mercy, mercy, mercy. So this is how at times God, when he gives you some important uh, responsibility and he calls you. Follow, take heed. Don't, don't mind what the others will say. Don't mind if they seem to be flourishing in this life and you just murag, wa maka ni tubo, o murag inani, rumani mong kinabuhi. Okay? And way back in Cebu, I have a house. My, the ministry was doing well, etc. And then, suddenly, ibtun ka, magsugo na saka, Lord, at 64, ay mo, di kong ibtun? Magsugo na sa ministry. Do I have Do I have the strength? Can Can I still do it? And then somebody mrogani si ko ay sini liko ni muda is preach about Abraham and God just spoke to me. Boom. And Moses, I think, basa it was on the Old Testament and it's like said, yeah, there's really no no retirement in in the Lord and Man, nag-i-plug-in dahil ko sa gino sa Caleb para bibahan sa bang seniors ba? 
Nga, dili pa na, that's not the end yet of your line. You're still breathing, you can still stand up, you can still walk and talk. So, continue. So, one of the Bible commentaries said, as uh, I said ganina, to engage from worldly affairs. Is it possible? Yes, it is when we make a commitment to God to follow Him. Man ako ingon ni Muhad God, not really called me, and obey, ang niya ni obey ko, carnal Christian, yung go hang tud garun. Kibawang mga God, God knows your tendencies. No? Kana ba ang murubag, di kay ka mubantay because I, I'm not the one pitching there all the time. Okay, or I'm not there in the worship team, or I'm not leading the youth or the young adults or whatever, or that I'm not a teacher. Nobody knows about me. I just come on Sundays. Lincoln. Sino sa bangko? Go home. And that's it. I already fulfilled my duty as a Christian. When we were in Boracay for a certain training sa volleyball, ngato sad na sad sila din na sa to. Link, lingkod, upo, basta muraging lunggum ko na ilabay, pasinaw ko noong yun, kung ako parihara da eh. Kaya kadaghanas mga tao, marasad gihapon. So, mga nga, it's easy to profess as Christian without a real commitment. Commitment, mga God, makes us follow the rules and abide in it. But listen to, res- to the response of the man. Lord, First, let me go and bury my father. Paliyas ako ginawa ko sa tong ilubong kay Murag. Gahingal-hingal ang matingali ito. The man actually pretended to be duty-bound to serve his father till his death. It is not bad to have such a desire, but when God calls us to follow him, we must obey. Why? He is the greatest authority and the highest being we need to give our full attention to. When he calls, we must come to him trembling in reverential fear and fall at his feet feet, and say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Many professing believers make their parents as an excuse not to go full-time or simply to commit in small group or as a volunteer in whatever work there is in the body of Christ. Daghantang excuses. We make our parents, our families, ex- as an excuse. Many prof- uh, professing Christians find it hard to give their time, talents, and most of all, treasure. They are full of excuses just like this guy. If we look at again at the life of Jesus Christ as the eldest son, he took care of Mary because Je- uh, Joseph died earlier. He took care of his siblings. But when God the Father called him to start his ministry, he left his family. He was the eldest. Why? Jesus knows his identity and his purpose. It's very important that you know who you are and the purpose why what you are now, a believer. So do you know who you are? Do you really know who you are? If you say, I'm a Christian, why are you a Christian? And what are you doing as a Christian? Asan dem simba? Mutait man ko. Oh, bibugay kay kakanta ng ito. Kung anjud kay, give in to kay ko. But after that, nothing. So, What's the purpose of your life? Why did you receive Jesus Christ? Do you know really why you are saved? So if you don't know and yet you profess to know Jesus Christ, then listen to what Jesus is saying. Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Hi. Meaning, let those who are still in their sin, those who still love the world, take care of those parents of yours. They are living in the world. Our main duty and responsibility is to Christ. 
to obey his commands and to proclaim the kingdom of God. Sad to say, tagahan pagyod kayo sa mga believers neglected the Great Commission because they are still entertained and intertwined, entertained by the world, intertwined pagyod by the world instead of being intertwined with God. Mona, ang priorities in life are wrong. We tend to have compassion only for our sick or old family members, relatives, and friends, but we don't have the godly compassion to tell them about Jesus Christ, which is top priority. Second, to taking care of their physical needs. How many? How many people, sa akong experience nood, kanang ti George, oops, tura, kanang palikog share sa akong kuan, kaya nasakit na, etc., Ano dahi ikaw? Dahi lusod, pastura, ipata na na. Mano, mano ba yung usi ka? Kaya ngayon mo mo kong lakaw ay klaro. So you cannot tell your father, your mother, or your dying sibling or whatever about Christ. Kaya di mas lamaminaw ni mo. Kung siya kay klaro, yung mong lakaw. Ah, di na madwa balik. I don't have a big congregation because I really tell, chup, I really, because you have to be real. Sunday upon Sunday, you come and you listen to the word of God. Much is given, much is required. So, may pag din alam mo manimba. Diba? Ano mo simba pa mga? God will require you so much by what you have heard from Him. Mas maloy pang ginoo from those na wajud ka doon sa iyang pulong or tagsara kay makapag wag ay give you relationship but you profess to be a Christian oh boy that's a big responsibility that you have to face and answer the li- to the living God o kitang tanan raba mo ending raba yun so it's a scary thing so mo take care ta nila but we don't talk about them we need to remember that Jesus came to save our souls, not our bodies. But we want to take care of their bodies, extend their life, if we can mangutang here and there, but never said about Christ. Kung dying pa man or sickly na ni siya. Okay, when a person is sick, mas open man na siya. Amen? Kaya itong lawas, it will resurrect anyway in his second coming, which is preceded by the rapture. I remember as a new believer, I pursued a better life to help my family. Bago pa man ko nga Christian. My father just died. He was the first person I brought to the Lord. And it was really a very hard confrontation. And he was sick. And I told him, Kusun naman may agimat, sing sing ba? Pa, I don't believe that anymore. And I have never believed that even before. Ay niya, ko sa kong papa, managpa man to. If your answer is not correct. <laughs> Namusag pa, gaya po ni, bisag medyuluya pa. So, gandam na kudaan. Bro, I was crying that the God you introduced to me is not the real God. I am already a believer and we are very, you know, Katoliko, Sandado, etc. Every Sunday, every Monday to Sunday, you are check. Nisimba na ka, nisimba na ka, nisimba na ka. Niya may sakit ko mamakak, oo, oh, oo. Oh. Asa man. At tos mga lagyo ang lugar. Ito sacred heart pa. Ito yung tourist pa. Gadi niya ma-check. Niya, mag-offer, 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 mag-offer. Mag-duwa mi pa, bisa guwa. Because I don't like going there. Nga, nag-offer, offer ka din ha. Pasod yung kasilwa sa simbahan. And that time, when I was a believer, of course, your heart is crushed, no? Your, my dad passed away, my mother is sick, our business was going down. However, in my heart, I sense God's call in my life. I tried to dismiss it a lot of times. I don't want to listen. I continued to set my eyes on going abroad after I finished this second course in college. Nagpiti man ko. But God did something to stop me in my career path in many ways. One of the obvious things was the joy. 
I have so much joy when I proclaim the gospel to others. To make it short, I just surrendered to God and allowed Him to lead me. And up to now, I do not regret at all, even though some people, even some of my members of my family, Saturday term day, my sister just used an English game, highly intellectual, you know, superb. Pinorius, Pinorius game. Pinorius ko and some of my siblings nga akong nabira in the Lord. Mga Pinorius ko nami. War ba dyan na nga niya bisag piso? I do not regret at all that God called me to serve Him full time. I will not exchange it for anything for I found joy and fulfillment in Christ alone. Amen. I'd like to, God wants me to share this, you know. Um, my mother was sick. And that was also a great testimony to my mother because he was, she was always lambasting me because she's very, very into our previous religion, wearing all the colors that is needed, the uniform. And she was the greatest persecutor. But every time she gets sick, and I, I have no means, God don't want me to coach volleyball or play volleyball or go into business. And I ha my business was also taken away by God. God is always a very good provider. I said, Lord, where you go? You know, uh, in our, my, my previous uh, ministry, in the previous church, we don't receive anything. You walk by faith and not by sight. Okay, so I just asked the Lord, if my mother gets sick again, please give me the means to provide for her needs. And that was the very uh, point that God allowed my mom to just go one after the other, hospitalization, her needs, etc. She was deteriorating. And I always tell her, Mom, look, who are the Christians in the family that are support? We are the only ones supporting you. Nya, kani imong anak nga imong ingnon nga pobre na kayo na koy nahot. Okay, she was pampered by me when I was still have a lot of money. I said, "Don't work because she was already 60. I'll give you your allowance." And then suddenly, I got bankrupt, nothing to give, so I was bate already. And she realized that. And one thing pa good because I can't afford to ha I was a pastor and I cannot afford somebody to be on that Sunday, kay mo hatag mag kag iloan na yung taon sa tayo mong kaubang pastor, no? Yeah, pupurim sa kaya tayo akong church. So what can I do? I was assigned ng mabantay niya and I know that she might be gone and I won't be there. So I keep telling her about the Lord and she receives again and again and every time I just go, Ma, I have to go and preach the gospel. So, this might be our last time that I'm going to see you. Wakokibao, mianarasha. But lo and behold, when she gets better, mananasha. Koy guni mo? Magpahiyahay ko kay along the beach man ko. Kaya nito ang hangin nato. So, dito pa siya, dito pa siya, layo pa siya. <laughs> and later on, naramis mga landong sa kahoy, sood na siya. When we have our very small, small, nga murag payag payag nga, we come, come together, sood na siya. And then one day, she really sees all of it. So the, our testimony, our commitment to God, even if God will take everything away from you, but when you are in need of His help, God will always be there. And it will be a great testimony. And God just you know, uh, assured me in my heart when my mom said, stop nani all this going in and out of the hospital. I want to go home. Why, ma? I want to go. Asa man ka uli, ma? In my house or to my sister's house who takes care of her also? She I want to go there. Asa man not there, ma? To Jesus. Okay? And... It was a very sweet smile, and when, when we took her home, uh, just a few days after, she was gone. And I was so assured that she really know the Lord. But are you willing to make the sacrifice for your loved ones to really know Christ? 
I'm the first in my family who came to know the Lord. And I questioned the Lord, why me? Ano ko man yun, Lord? Eh, lisura na pa kay mga maguwang. I'm the fifth, seven man me. So, to tell your mga maguwang about Christ, murag, listen, no? You'll be teaching them about Christ. Yung minyong sa, hmm? Mas na po na minyong sa duyan. So, mga ni mga kiksuunan, is God calling you to become His real disciples? What is holding you back? What is holding you back? Old parents? Pleasure of the world? Are tie up with old friends? This is not me speaking. This is God speaking to you. He's calling you to proclaim His kingdom. Many people are dying and they're going to hell, including our family members, relatives, and friends that we often go out with, dying together, okay? spend time with many activities. Even those people that we often meet as our suki in the marketplace, ang parlor, ang barbershop, your favorite parlor barbershop, they need Jesus. Nakabuild ka relationship with them. Talk about God to them. They need to hear the gospel. Their blood will be on on you if you keep silent. Kalui isila. Manang ako wakay tay kaluoy. We need to ask God because we cannot produce it on our own. We need to ask God. Point number three, consider and be willing to let go of earthly families and loved ones. Luke 9.61, still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Someone asked me, is it wrong to be with a family? It's not. It is wrong when they become your priority. Making God a second, third, or fourth priority. Oh, kila naman ako na i dadun sila sa ginoo. Be there, etc. But does that mean you are free of any other obligations that God is calling you? Lisud mo yung family, I know. Lisud yun kay Sharon ang family. But is your life has changed around 180 degrees enough for them to see, to tell you and, and say, you're crazy? Nakay guapong job. Dagko og sildo. My sister said, buang ni undang. Mumbuang ko kay nundang ko. Nagmuhimu kong business-business, gibiaan na gihapon. Nakaroon tanawa, Pinorius. Pinorius nga tao. At times, we, we want to be understood by our families, right? We don't want them to be far from us. It's so painful when, it's, when it comes to our families. The tie with our families is close. Kaayong maguta, no? Kaya kita mga Filipino. Unya, we, we find our identity and a purpose in life na entwined ka po sa family instead of finding kay set apart man ka when you are called by God you are set apart for him and for his glory i'm not saying leave them don't feed them don't work anymore good for me because i was single or i'm still a single but i look after my parents my mother and a sakit when my brothers and sisters they need help i'm always there Whatever I can give. I, I'm not cutting my relationship with them, even even though katung sa bago pa, gitat off jiko nila, sila rin ang lakaw, ako pirmi wa kibaw. Nihimo na katong bill bill, katong ting tong, dano, pati cellphone. Hmm? Para lang jud taong kung ma, ma, ma notify ba kung mga laag sila, di ko pa pilun. Wa, jo ni sud. Nana ko cellphone, wa, gaya po manawag. So, I intentionally just go. Pabagaw sa isa na ang bisagwa ka invitara. And serve. And just do whatever you can. Di ka magpa raina raina din ha. So God showed me be a servant. So Jesus is clear who we should love the most in Matthew 22, 36 to 40. 
There was a teacher who tested him, what is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus said, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with everything that you have. When God commanded that, schedule ang top second far second far lang na ang uban your wife your husband your children whatever yes you love them serve them but that is through your love for god never out of your love for them marong nagyuta dinha masipyat nagyuta diha Makita ni mo a person who loves God so much, love their wives so much. Sakto ba, Sel? I've I've seen that in couples. Si mo envy beta ko ngayon kanga ko nito tanila oh. They're they're as a couple, they are really you know namin yun ay conflict no. Nabisa ganon yung mga friends friends lam, mga conflict mga ni. But if you have the love of God, you love God so much. You can love the person in spite sa iyang mga weaknesses and accept them. And by doing so, you are actually fulfilling all the laws. God is not saying, don't love them. Love me first and then you can love your family, your friends, your relatives the way that it should be. This is the case of the third one, a be disciple of Jesus who has the nerve to make a condition before following Jesus. His condition was first, he will go back to his family and bid them goodbye. Do you really think that was the reason? How many circumstances in life that we are in and you cannot say goodbye? Diba? So we just tell our neighbors, pelug lang ug ingon ha kay nag nay emergency or what is called by the office or this and that. Can you just inform them? And even especially in other countries nga wala silingan nga matawag or relative nearby nga, oy ako mga bata manguli to unta wa tuy ka o nya wa you know ug mapa ko muuli. Wala. Kita we we are so succumbed into believing that Loving them first is right. A military man who is called military good siya, called by his duty to go and serve kay dunay emergency or dunay nagkagubot nya to nagpinusilay. I don't think mo ay mga anak, wag tarong sumod din ha. Nya din hinag sulob ka. Kayo to ha, yo pinusilay pamingan to ha. Wa na oy, labi na gitawag sa commander. We need backup. Come immediately. My father was a policeman, and he was uh, at that time the the head of the mobile patrol in Cebu. So every time he says "chong chong chong" and be there in one minute, can I go put ngayon to add to yun ang mga police? Wah, yun ay sa wah yun ay yun na time passer kay manang hit sa kung sawa sir ha kay amura barong ko an anniversary. The passer I'm in the middle of my birthday of my anak. So how come? How come we understand that military serve that way? They obey first, diba? Don't question. You may, you may later tingali. But how come when God, the commanding officer, ask us do this, do that? Sikilan tak unya lang sa Lord sabut pito ka Lord uy. Waka sabut ang ginoo uy. Madilis yah priority after dying on the cross. Pasway sa mo pasuksuk sa inyong kamot unya ipadrill sa ara sa doktor. Makaingon jud mo grabe jud to kasakit giagian ni Jesus Christ. He died for you a painful death. He was a real human in human in blood and flesh. He suffered greatly from birth to death. Yeah, kita pati lawo lang ta sa Ginoo gamay ang discomfort. Paino lang ta sa Ginoo nga ana sa gamay ang distansya lang sa nila. Di na dayon ta kisikisi. We as if God is in 
our command di Lord ingon ani ayo ana Lord we cannot command God he is the king of kings and the lord of lords so make sunan o postpone kasi mong duty and responsibility diba get teach to Maribel as a soldier your concern is not on the civilian life your concern is the business of your commanding officer are you in the business of the commanding officer I didn't, I didn't know unsay unsay buhato na ako dinhi and then god just spoke to me start back your love love mo kay nanimong volleyball ganahan mo kay kaniana but he has to filter everything about me sa volleyball before he used me again Magkagisunan, opportunities but to serve God. Atong tanawon. And di na tamo kwinta sa, sa unsay, uy, mahal ka ayo, uy, kapoy ka ayo, uy, niya ka nang gasto kay sa heart. O, oh, gasto dyan sa heart. <laughs> gasto dyan sa heart. But, api naman yun na. So, duty calls, just go, no matter what. Okay? Go out and serve God through others. Okay? Ayok ilimit lang sa ako ng pamili, kani Russell din he. Of course, ma-minister mo kasi mong family good by the way you obey and have the joy in obeying Christ. Amen? Amen? Ina ko na yung kaubanda. Amen? Itap ko no. So, ningon si Jesus, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back, nag-ana na, yung sipaglingi-lingi, di yun kabot, is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Iyang illustration is a farmer. Di ba, a farmer, kita mata dyan, bit, na mata din yun, labi na kami, bitos mi, na yun mi sa agricultural land, na na yun na mag, shh, mag-plow din ha. Imagine ka nang sige kagdaro niya sige kaglingilingi. One is madisgrasya ka, second did you ka kahuman? 'Di ba? Double minded. Your heart and your mind is not set to just go even if you don't understand. That's one thing. You don't understand why you have to do this, but God says just go. God commands ra ba it's one step at a time. Ya ko akaw ra ba ko gana ko makakita na ko sa unahan. Wa unsa jo Agi ani unsay may tabo ani Lord ana but God said no you need to listen and just to trust me Ang farmer nga nagplow without any doubt leaving his family early in the morning and goes back late in the afternoon knows that what he's going what he's doing will feed a lot of people including his family if you keep doing and be very obedient to God, faithful to God, it will make your family come to know the Lord. How many of us here still mourn for our loved ones? Brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, lolos, lolas, tios, tio, and tia who are not receiving the Lord, who are not willing even to give you a chance to tell them about the Lord. So if we are double-minded, we are not fit in the kingdom of God. A mind who always, a mind who always thinks of what he has left behind is double-minded. This is how we should, when we serve Christ, we must be like Paul. Paul, my God says in Colossae, Since then, Colossians 3.1, You have been raised with Christ, set your hearts and Minds on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Being raised with Christ means being forgiven for all our trespasses, past, present, and future. That means new life, a new and living hope in Christ. 
Paul was assured of eternal life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul knew where he was going after this life. And he knew it is the best place a man could possibly be. Heaven. How about you? Mga katauhan. Are you sure you have eternal life? We, it's so easy to say, I'm sure. But if you are not part and you are not really doing what God has called you to do, then that's a false presumption. No? Ni presume lang ka, you have eternal life. We should be scared. Having all the knowledge we talk about our salvation, about heaven, but at the same time, ga galanday landay lang taba. Mura nang taga pasi pasiyo rata din ng kalibutan na ngawag yutay gibuhat ba para sa ginoo. And so scared to even tell people, you know, I love you so much. Masukot tengay kanya ni, but I will tell you, God loves you. And do you know that, you know, just tell them about Jesus Christ. Yako di ka ganahan, just tell me din ako misukot ani. At least you have done your duty and responsibility to that person, right? Have you done that? A friend na gapunta ha? Ano lang? Pero din sa makik friend, ilan na ang problema? Amen? Because we are to tell them. By doing so, by working in the kingdom of God, by being in His service all the time, you know you have eternal life. That is why Paul said, set your heart, set your mind. You are a new creation in Christ. Don't miss it up by holding on to someone or something in this life. The things on earth will perish, but Jesus' promise will never perish. Summary. Summarize lang ko. Christian ka? Then you must be a disciple of Jesus Christ. What kind of a disciple? Are you like the first who boldly told Jesus of his intention to follow him? Or are you the third one? Who wants to follow but dare to give Jesus a condition? On the other hand, have you been hearing the invitation of Jesus to be his disciple, to do this, to do that, but you have so many reservations, excuses, because you still want the things in this life? Di magkuku kabiya, Lord. Please, sud. Mamatay ko kung mubiya ko ani. Whichever you are in the three examples, I hope you will consider the cost in following Jesus. Really consider it well. Be willing to leave the comfort of earthly life, like home, good job, nice car, nice house, etc. Be willing to live separately from the people who still do not know the Lord like our families and not be worried about them at all, even in when they are old. God will take care of them when you take care of what Jesus wants you to be and to do. Peter did that, right? mother-in-law. Proclaim the gospel. Can you proclaim the gospel? Number three, be willing to serve to severe family ties in order to focus our service in the kingdom of God. Lisud, lisud ra uy. Especially if the ang ikaw sa imong family, what you guys say when it comes to God? Nya ikaw pa ang masuyop nila. Masuyop ka nila sa in every activities. Have you considered that? To really stand up for Christ? Ano, ako'y pamilya, anak. Yes, if you stand up for Christ, you will lose some, but gain some. You will lose some, but gain some. Do not look back, do not regret. You have a great eternal future than those who seem to have plenty. They will enjoy it only in this life. A short time compared to the eternal promise of God, a joy and pleasure forevermore. So, a challenge will be, wala, wala nato na, Evaluate where you are in your Christian walk. Decide what kind of disciple you will be. A half-breed or a pure-breed? half-breed. Consider the cost of becoming a pure-breed and continue to enjoy God in this life, whether living in plenty or in want. 
as the apostles said in Philippians 4.13, For I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And then he also have this motto in his life. Philippians 1.21, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go living in this body, that would mean fruitful labor for me. Do we have that? Let's pray. Father, I praise you and I thank you for your word. We, I know that there are many struggles that we have right now in life. And there are many things that we need to consider, but you are very clear in what you are saying to us right now. You want to be first. You must be the king in our lives. You must be the Lord. You must be our master. You must reign in and over us, for we owe everything to you. The air that we breathe, the strength that we have, the wisdom, O Lord. And all the faculties that are still functioning, Lord, it is all because of you. We can never buy this from anywhere. Even with human organs and everything that are available still, Father God. We cannot. You are a God. And I just hope, Lord, it will cause us to always tell ourselves, our lives belong to you. My life belongs to you. I don't own, I'm not owned by anyone, but by you alone. And Lord, whoever person you are talking to right now, or maybe some are just don't want to listen to this, Lord, you know what to do next. I'm just your mouthpiece. These are your words and this is your message. And I just entrust, O oh Lord, everything to you. Continue to be glorified, magnified, O oh God. In this church, in every family presented here, in every individual, Lord, that will not just do anything without really giving our all to you. Thank you, Lord, for your teaching, for your rebuke, for your correction, for your training. For you want us to be righteous, just like your son. To you alone is the glory, honor, and praises in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.